Next up is the CSS background color. So let's close out our HTML here so we could focus on the actual instructions. And again, these step-by-step -step instructions are kind of the answer to the challenge. So we're gonna do it once as the overview and then again as the challenge, possible slight differences. But let's go ahead with the background color. If the color property was text color, background color is a little clearer. It's the background color of the element. And you're gonna see something strange. If you wrote the text, this is text, you'll see that it's not just where the T and the T at the ends, you know, it's not just the phrase that is going to have a background color. It's going to be the full phrase for sure. And then it's going to extend all the way to the end of the page. That's because the actual element is bigger than the content inside. Now we're going to get all into that in lesson three and lesson four when we talk in depth about block elements versus inline elements. But in this case, if you're expecting the background color to only take the element uh, background color like here, that's not necessarily what's happening here. You're gonna see when we create this, that's gonna extend, but let's take a look because it's better to see it. So the first thing we're gonna do is create an element and style tag. So no longer hand-holding a little bit. I'm just kind of laying it all out there. In order to test out these properties, we're going to be creating an H3 a lot, or an H4. Just because we want to change the color of that attribute and we need um, that element and we need an element written down so we can change it. So I kind of truncated the instructions. So let's create an element and a style tag. I'm putting myself in your shoes. And by this point, after so much repetition, we should be able to create an H3. So create an element, it could be a P tag, it could be an H3. Create any element because we're going to use that element to, to learn the background color property. So I'm going to create an H3 and write my name. The next part of the instructions was create an element and style tag. So again, more practice with the style tag. Give myself room. That's it for step one. Ah, not written in the instructions here, but you should create, you should reference the element you just wrote and give yourself room in the brackets. So pretty much recreate this uh, in your practice environment or down here for the challenge. Now we're gonna add our background color and we're gonna set our value to any color. I'm gonna change it to red and then I'm gonna change it to different colors for the challenge. But let's just take a look at the syntax. The syntax is what's been important here. And everything so far is the same. The only difference is that instead of color, we're doing a different property. Background. Oops. Color. Pay attention that it's case sensitive. So this is incorrect. You can see that right away my syntax, the syntax coloring, the fact that this is green, this is yellow, this is white, this is red, or, you know, don't be fooled. All the values look like that. Is the first indication that something's wrong. So as soon as you start to see things uh, that look a little bit different than the syntax coloring you had before, for example, I don't know, that one will let you slide. This one won't. That's your first indication of something wrong. So these are uh, case sensitive. And there's a dash here. If you just do a space, hmm, that, now that will definitely not work. But it won't give you the, the clearest hint. Let's see what happens when we do this. See, this won't work. It's very specific. It's background lowercase, a dash, and then color. And now you can affect the background color, which is blue. But let's take a look at it in real life. Move on to the challenge, and it says, create an H4 tag. No problem, H4. And there it is, Lenny Roy. Create a style tag. Again, we should be used to this. Okay, 
and create a, and change the background color of the H4 to any color. So right now you can see it has no background color. So what's the first thing I'm going to do? Reference my selector. Give myself two brackets and space to work. And now I'm going to reference the property that I want to change, background color. And I'm going to change it to blue and a semicolon. Again, the syntax for CSS styles is important to memorize. And then you can start playing around with different ones. And we're, we're going to be adding more than one later. So you'll see how we really can customize our elements. But right now, it's just going to be an H4 with a text color of black, since that's the default, and a background color now changed from its default none to blue. And there it is. And like I said, you can add some because the blue and black kind of looks a little bit hard to read. So you can add color white. But let's leave that out for now. If you have this, then you're done with this challenge. Again, it's exactly the same syntax as before. And the only difference is the property. And we're going to be talking about different properties and different values. And that is the crux or that is the meat of these lessons. The CSS syntax is what you should spend a lot of time on. And then afterwards, we're just kind of switching things in and out to see what they do to our elements. But so that's the background color. No gotchas. Pretty easy one. Let's move on to the next.